Welcome to the Earth Goodwill Project channel. Join me on a journey across parts of Australia as we look at the death of an estimated 10 million wildlife that die as a result of roadkill in Australia every year. So this issue is so serious that in some cases it has caused local extinctions of particularly vulnerable wildlife species. We're also going to look at several free and inexpensive energy solutions and other solutions to help mitigate the huge losses of wildlife across Australia and other parts of the world. So these solutions are applicable to people and animals in every country on Earth, particularly Mexico, the United States of America and Asian nations that experience similar roadkill problems to Australia. So it should be noted that humans too are sometimes injured in collisions with large wildlife such as kangaroos, cattle and wombats and 5% of these collisions in Australia are fatal for humans. So some bike and car drivers, when they swerve on the, on the road, they miss the wildlife and they also suffer serious injuries as a result of these car accidents and also have costly write-offs on their cars and have to purchase new motor vehicles. People who travel across roads and highways in Australia are accustomed to seeing enormous numbers of dead animals by the roadside. These wildlife include kangaroos, koalas, wombats, possums, foxes, emus, cattle, hawks, birds, Tasmanian devils, platypuses, wallabies, quolls, cassowary birds, owls, ducks, wedge-tailed eagles, frogs, tawny frogmouths, little penguins, potteroos, bandicoots, echidnas, platypuses, sheep, goats, hens, plover birds, blue tongue lizards, snakes and echidnas. So many of the Australia's cuddly koalas are killed in parts of Australia during their breeding season every year between August and January. They seek to cross the roads to get water across the road on the river and they get hit by drivers who cannot see them on the road. They're also killed at night when they cross the road to find water. In Tasmania, which is the southern state of Australia, it is estimated that one animal dies after being hit by a motor vehicle every two minutes. So that's 32 animals that die in Tasmania every hour of every day. Most of the wildlife perish on the roads during the winter months due to poor climatic conditions, environmental impacts, their movement patterns with breeding seasons and roadworks, which there's lots of roadworks going on across Australia at the moment, changes their mobility patterns of the wildlife. The enormous death rates of Australian wildlife on our roads does not include the maiming of deaths of cats and dogs who are hit by motor vehicles in urban areas. Traditionally, animals, particularly wildlife, they travel along the song lines or ley lines that have been cut off in recent decades by barbed wire fences and replaced by highways and roads and urban dwellings quite sad when you come across injured animals who you find lying in agony on roads and highways sometimes for days on end unable to move or receive medical assistance to mitigate their pain and suffering and many of these animals have spinal trauma head trauma missing limbs internal bruising and bleeding and the insides torn open we also find when we drive on highways across australia with many dead roos with their baby joeys in their pouches and they're unable to defend themselves or survive alone without their mothers. When you see roadkill by the side you always see the birds of prey and the vultures, sometimes dingoes hanging around the injured or dead animals. Most people that drive across Australia are normalised to the huge scale of roadkill and the static signage that's placed around wildlife corridors doesn't seem to be working to reduce the speed of drivers who drive through these, these build up wildlife areas. So most people don't realise that when it's cold or after it rains, the animals are attracted to the roads to gain warmth from the heat of the bitumen of the road. And this makes them sitting ducks for fast moving vehicles. So with all these seasonal variations, the animals migrate around spring and summer and this increased mobility enhances their likelihood of being hit by vehicles near roadsides especially for young animals who venture out onto dangerous roads in front of moving cars. With all these innocent animals going about their daily business being struck down by thoughtless and speeding drivers, it's quite disheartening to see this large-scale carnage. 
Recently I was grabbing a coffee and this elderly lady came into the coffee shop and she was very distressed and in a state of shock. The night before she had written off her car after she was travelling home uh, at night and she hit a wombat. Her car wasn't insured, it was a write-off. Uh, she was lucky to be alive and the poor wombat it will most likely be passed away. Uh, recently I went down to Gippsland which is in the eastern part of the state that I live in and on the road home, on the highway home, about every two kilometres I saw a dead kangaroo. Recently when I was in South Australia I came across six kangaroos in one 500 metre stretch of road that had passed away after a large truck had come through obviously at night and mowed them all down. So an outback road. Also when I was driving through South Australia I noticed that Perhaps every three minutes I would come across a dead cow or a dead kangaroo or emu by the side of the road. How do we deal with this problem of reducing the road kill? Essentially, it needs to be owned by every single person who is a road user. And humans can easily reduce the immense suffering and needless carnage of wildlife on our roads. The best solution to this problem is obviously to reduce the speed to 20 kilometres an hour within wildlife corridors where wildlife are known to frequent. And it's also wise, and most people know, never to drive between dawn and dusk in regional, rural and high wildlife areas as there's a marked increase in hitting the animals when they come across the road at night and that's when most of them are killed. Most people will carry a clean old pillowcase and blanket or towel in the boot of their car and some gloves and they'll pick up injured wildlife and drop them to the nearest wildlife shelter so they can be cared back to good health if they find them injured on the road on, during their travels. It's important to do this with a towel or a blanket because many of the injured animals are in states of shock when you find them and they can scratch and hurt you. A couple of simple methods that I found that has resulted in me never hitting an animal when I've travelled, and I travel quite a bit, is to fit the motor vehicle with a device called a roo whistler, either on the bumper bar or on the roof of the car. And this small device sends out a whistle, high pitch whistle, and animals can hear it for many kilometres up ahead, and they know to move away from the road that a vehicle is approaching. So these are quite cost effective. They cost between three to six dollars uh, in Australia. So that's about a dollar fifty to four dollars US. Another preventative energy method that I always use on the open roads is to send a white beam of light out up ahead across the highway, say 10 to 50 kilometers up ahead. And I send a telepathic message in this beam of light because light carries intelligence intelligence can come in the form of communication so this telepathic message I send always is to let all the birds and the animals and the insects nearby uh, let them be warned that there's a moving car coming and to clear the road from this moving car to stay safe. So most wildlife have strong telepathic communication abilities and they always pick up on the message and vacate the road when they hear that warning signal being sent out ahead. Instances where I sadly come across deceased roadkill, I call on the medicine Buddha, which is a healing Buddha, to send to the deceased animal back to the light. Now, how I do that is I align with either Lord Jesus Christ or Lord Buddha Kuang Yang, and also the medicine Buddha. So I imagine medicine Buddha and then above them either Lord Jesus Christ and or Lord Buddha Kuang Yang. Depending on your faith or your religion, you can replace that, whether you're Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, whatever religion you are, you replace that with whatever spiritual or religious deity that you pray to. Then I visualize the deceased animal soul being sent from its dead physical body back to heaven through this pillar of white light. And I also ask for the white light to purify the animal's soul as it heads back on its journey back to spirit. So this is a form of world service and helps the animal to reconnect with its group soul. It also generates immense good karma for yourself for assisting the animal kingdom and their evolution. It also helps mitigate some of the suffering that the poor deceased animals experience, the shock and the trauma after they're killed on the road as well. To conclude, all of these steps combine using the rear whistler in the car, lowering your road speed when you're driving through wildlife corridors, sending 
light beams of telepathic messages ahead on your journey to let the animals know and the birds and the insects know to move out of the way utilizing medicine buddha aligned with your spiritual religious deity to send the deceased soul through back to the light are all valuable methods to assist our friends in the animal kingdom so i'd love to hear your feedback about what methods best work for you and your experiences helping injured wildlife that you found on highways around the world so thanks for listening and namaste